American period is one of the turning points which made our Philippine literary tradition colorful and interesting. This period saw the addition of a colorful language, the English language, as an indispensable tool for literature and communication. The history of the Philippines from 1898 to 1946 covers the period of American rule in the Philippines. It was a complex and dynamic journey that unfolded in response to the profound socio-political changes brought about by American rule. This era of colonization was marked by significant transformations in governance, culture, language, and societal values. As Filipinos navigated the challenges and opportunities of American colonization, their literary expressions evolved through distinct phases. The period of reorientation, the period of imitation, and the period of self-discovery. Before we delve deeper in the meaning and explanation of this poster, let me share with you a short trivia before the Americans set foot in our country. Before the Spaniards arrived, the Philippines already had their own literature written in by Bali. But during the Spanish period, Baybayin was prohibited and burned. Records of those literatures of our forefathers were only passed down orally. On August 13, 1898, the Battle of Manila by the Americans freed the Philippines from the Spaniards. English as a literary vehicle came with American occupation. And as they say, a choice bestowed on us by history. The period of reorientation started. This period, period from 1898 to 1901 marks the transition from Spanish colonial rule to American colonization. While it wasn't a prolific period for literary production, it set the stage for the emergence of new voices under American influence. Many Filipinos started writing again with a theme of nationalism. Filipino writers went in all forms of literature, like news reporting, poetry, stories, plays, essays, and novels. Walang Sugat is a lyric dramatic genre written by Severino Reyes in 1898. El Grito del Pueblo, or The Call of the Nation, was a socialist newspaper founded by Pascual Poblete in the same year. El Nuevo Dia or The New Day, in English, was a Spanish-language newspaper founded by Sergio Osmeña in 1900. It was the first daily newspaper in Cebu that supported the Philippine cause against the Spanish and American colonialism. And El Renacimiento, a bilingual Spanish-Tagalog newspaper founded by Rafael Palma in 1901. It was one of the most influential newspapers in Manila as it exposed the abuses and corruption of American officials and the Catholic Church. Another is the Philippine Free Press, the first privately owned publication to publish English works of Filipino writers. It is the Philippines' oldest weekly English language periodical currently still in print. By 1900, English came to be used as a medium of instruction in the public schools. Balagtasan emerged during this period. It was a unique form of literary expression that involved poetic debates often ad addressing important social and political issues. Notable poets like Jose Corazon de Jesus and Florentino Colliantes engaged in Balagtasan contributing to the cultural and intellectual landscape of the time. The poem Filipino Poetry was anthologized in the first collection of poetry in English. Among the poets featured in this anthology were Proceso Sebastian, Maximo Calao, 
Fernando Maramag, Leopoldo Oychanko, Jose Lidesma, Carlos Piromulo, Francisco Tonogbanwa, Juan Pastrana, Maria Goncillo, Paz Marquez Benitez, Luis Dato, and many others. Philippine literature in English as a direct result of American colonization of the country could not escape being imitative of American models of writing, especially during its period of apprenticeship. The poetry written by early poets manifested studied attempts at versification as in this sample poem, which is proof of the poet's rather elementary exercise in the English language. It was written by Juan F. Salazar. During 1902 to 1903, Jose Rizal's Mi Ultimo Adios or My Last Farewell was written at the end of the Spanish colonial period, but it continued to have a significant influence on Filipino nationalism during the early American period. This poem expressed Rizal's patriotism and his hopes for the future of the Philippines. Kahapon ngayon at bukas, is a famous verse drama written by Aurelio Tolentino, a Filipino playwright, poet, and revolutionary. It is an anti-imperialist play that attacks colonizers of the Philippines. It caused a scandal because it involved tearing and trampling of the American flag on stage. Tanikalang Ginto, or The Golden Chain, is a three-act drama written by Juan Abad in 1902. During 1909, Ang Katipunan is a poem written by Robin K. Santos that celebrated the Katipunan, the revolutionary society that fought against the Spanish rule. It reflected the continued reverence for the Katipunan and its role in the country's history. Then, Sarso Corda is the first known Filipino poem published in English, written by Gusto Juliano. During this period of reorientation, we have the shift in governance. The change from Spanish to American rule brought about a shift in governance, legal systems, and institutions. Filipinos had to adopt to new forms of administration, education, and social structures. In cultural clash, the encounter with American culture brought about a clash of values and worldviews. Filipinos had to reconcile their traditional practices and values with the Western ideals and modernization introduced by the Americas. About language and education, English became the medium of instruction in schools, which was a significant change from the Spanish system. Filipinos needed to learn English, which had a lasting impact on the language and literature of the Philippines. And an impact on Philippine literature... The period of reorientation led to a re-evaluation of Filipino identity, values, and aspirations. Writers and intellectuals used literature to address the challenges and opportunities brought about by American colonialism. It was a time of introspection and examination of colonial impacts, which laid the groundwork for future literary expressions. Here are some suggested pieces and pioneered Filipino English writers during this period. Sorson Corda by Gusto Coliano, My Mother and Air Castles by Juan F. Salazar, and To My Lady in Lawag by Proceso Sebastian. Moving on, we are now in the period of imitation. This period refers to a phase in which writers imitate the styles and the themes of past works. During 1910, as the start of this period, Passion and the Revolution by Renato Constantino explored the socio-political changes brought about the revolution and the emergence of a new Filipino identity. It is a historical analysis of the Philippine Revolution and its impact on society. Next is Zoilo Galang. Zoilo Galang, who was a pioneer in fiction among his famous literary works, are a child of sorrow, in 1921. It is the first Philippine novel in English. Next is Life and Success. It is the first Philippine book of essays in English. Another is The Tale of Philippines. The first collection of short stories written in English by a Philippine author. Now, let us see what was Pedro Paterno's 
contribution in Philippine literature. He wrote the novel Hinai, which was heavily influenced by in Western Romantic novels. Another notable author is Fernando Maria Guerrero, who played a significant role during the Philippines' golden period of Spanish literature. One of his famous work is Risalitas. It is considered one of the 10 best books written about the Philippines by Encyclopedia Filipinas. It contains 150 poems involving his admiration for Sarasan. When it comes to Western literary influence, Filipino writers were heavily influenced by Western literary forms particularly American and European. They imitated style and themes of Western literature, resulting in works that sometimes felt detached from indigenous culture. Next is language and themes. English became the primary language for literary expression, leading to the emergence of English language literature in the Philippines. Writers explored a wide range of themes, often echoing Western literary traditions. Next is diversity of writing styles. Despite the imitation, this period saw a diverse array of writing styles and approaches. Writers experimented with different genres and subjects, reflecting their engagement with Western literary trends. Next is impact on Philippine literature. The period of imitation had a significant impact on the language and style of Filipino literature. While it was a time of literary experimentation and skill development, it is also sparked debates about the authenticity of Filipino literature. Some argue that it risks losing its unique cultural identity. Here are the sad Suggested. Here are the suggested pieces to read and pioneer Filipino English writers during the period of imitation. Nevermind and Other Poems by Procopio Solujo, George Washington by Bernardo P. Garcia, Azucena by Marcelo D. Garcia Concepcion, Reminiscence by Lorenzo E. Paredes, Filipino Poetry by Rodolfo Dato. Dead Star by Paz Marquez Benitez, Tales of the Philippines by Zoilo Gala, Motors of Sail and Other Space by Carlos P. Romero, and that covers the period of imitation. Let us now find out what are the significant events, literary works, and notable authors during the period of self-discovery. The period of self-discovery, which began in the 1920s and 1930s, marked a return to indigenous roots and re-embrace of Filipino culture. Filipino writers had acquired the mastery of English writing in this period. Notable authors like Manuel Arguila, Jose Garcia Villa, and Paz Marquez Benitez began writing in English contributing to the development of Philippine literature in this language. In 1936, Carlos Bulusan is one of the most famous Filipino authors. He wrote My Father's Tragedy, a short story that reflects the struggles of Filipino migrant workers in the United States during the early 20th century. It explores themes of labor, identity, and the Filipino diaspora, in this time, drama symbolico also emerged. It is a historical and patriotic play that depicts the events and struggles of Philippine Revolution. In 1940, also known as World War II and resistance literature, Filipino writers produced literature that reflected the wartime experiences and resistance against Japanese occupation. Writers like Nick Joaquin, Manuel Rojas created works that captured the spirit of the times and the resilience of the Filipino people. In 1946, Manila My Manila was published. 
by Nick Joaquin. It is an essay that reflects the nostalgia and sentiment of Filipinos towards their beloved capital city, Manila. It celebrates the city's history and culture that covers the period of self-discovery. In 1950s to 1960s, by NPM Gonzalez, he wrote the, the Bamboo Dancers. It is a short story that explores the tension between tradition and modernity in Philippine society. It dwells into the complexities of cultural identity in a changing world. At the same time, F. Shilil Jose Poon is a novel that tells the story of Rosales, a town in the Philippines and its people during the American colonial period. It explores the themes of colonialism and the Filipino struggle for identity. In 1960s, Carlos Bulusan's America is in the Heart. It is a semi-autobiographical novel that provides insight into the life of Filipino immigrants in the United States during the early 20th century. It highlights the challenges and discrimination faced by Filipino migrants. Here are the suggested pieces to read and pioneer Filipino English writers during the period of self-discovery. Manila, a collection of verses by Luis Dato, Bang of Truth by Marcelo de Gracia Concepcion, Moon Shadows on the Water by Aurelio S. Alvero, May Book of Verses by Luis Dato, First Lives by Rafael Zulueta de Costa, Nuances by Aurelio Alvero, In Nationalism and as a desire for independence grow stronger Filipino writers and intellectuals sought to reaffirm their national identity. They rejected imitative approaches and aimed to express their unique cultural and historical experiences. Revival and Native Languages There was a resurgence of interest in Native languages and literature. Writers began to use Filipino language such as Tagalog, Cebuano, and Ilocano, as medium of expression, facilitating a deeper connection to their cultural heritage. Next is creation of folklore and traditions. Writers draw inspiration from Filipino folklore, myths, and indigenous traditions. They use these elements in their literature to connect with the rich cultural tapestry of the Philippines. Thus is impact on Philippine literature. The period of self-discovery led to a revitalization of Filipino literature with a focus on authenticity and a reconnection to indigenous culture. Works during this period were infused with a strong sense of nationalism and a commitment to preserving Filipino identity. It laid the foundation for the emergence of the modern Filipino literature characterized by a deeper understanding and the region's history, culture, and aspirations. This literary works spanning the American colonial period in the Philippines reflect the evolving themes, styles, and cultural influences of the time. They capture the spirit of resistance, nationalism, and the Filipino people's struggle for identity in the midst of changing colonial powers. Thank you.